Hi, in a previous video, we took a look at this uh, Zoyi or Zotec Instruments ZT702S, and it's a 10 megahertz bandwidth uh, single channel uh, combined multimeter and oscilloscope. And while there were a few issues with it, quite a few actually, it was the video was extremely, in fact, hugely popular. So um, these sorts of things at this sort of uh, price point, which was about uh, 80 US dollars, but this is now at a street price price of about 60 US dollars, um, it seemed to get a lot of people very excited. A lot of people uh, went out and bought this thing. So a lot of people thought that something with this uh, feature set and this sort of price point actually met their requirements really well. So they actually got one and uh, they're reasonably happy with it. Now, um, Zotec, uh, thank you very much, have sent in a new one, which is not the 702S, it's the 703S. So let's take a look at it. So it looks exactly the same, but this one is 50 megahertz bandwidth, it's dual channel, and it's 25,000 count instead of uh, 10,000 count, which was the 702. And it's uh, currently street price, it's not widely available, but I found a street price of um, 80 US dollars for this thing, but that was at a steep discount I think like 40% off or something like that so possibly like not a lot more expensive than the 702s and Zotec Instruments actually replied to my previous video on this and actually said that uh, I got like an early unit and a lot of some of the things were actually uh, fixed in uh, previous updates and you can firmware you can remote firmware update by via the USB although I haven't tried that on my original and here it is firmware upgrades and it's intelligent anti-burning just like the other one because Whoa, you don't want to burn your <laughs> LCD display, do you? <clears throat> so yeah, curiously, they don't have the model number on there. This is just the dual channel 50 megahertz version and the 702 um, is the single channel 10 megahertz version. So let's see what you get in the box. Get exactly the same pouch. Uh, you get one oscilloscope probe. I thought this was dual channel. What's going on? Uh, Beulah, Beulah, yeah, dual channel. Um, oh, anyway, what do you expect for the price point, I guess? Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, standard probes we got with the other one. And it's a P2060 60 megahertz uh, probe. It's the, uh, yep near or something like that it's what you expect um, built down to a price for this thing so these are basically identical instruments except for the dual channel versus single channel it's got the same USB uh, C interface where you can uh, charge and you can also access the uh, screen captures uh, remotely uh, from the drive and it's got the same uh, function generator internally but I suspect just like this one the function generator is just a gimmick so just pretend it doesn't have it I'd be great Greatly surprised if they've uh, improved that at all. But anyway, we'll have a look. Stop testing voltage in current mode. Don't do it. Tear off before use. <laughs> <laughs> They've had too many people blow the fuses in these things and try and return them. Uh, yeah, as a multimeter seller, I can tell you that happens. You can't tell which one is which, can you? Um, once again, don't believe the uh, 600 volt cat, 4000 volt cat uh, 3 rating. It's not independently certified and it doesn't have the internal uh, protection really required to meet any of that. So yeah, but that's typical of these uh, low cost instruments. What do you expect? For the film aficionados. Oh. So I'd be surprised if everything's not absolutely identical in uh, except for maybe the internals which is going to have dual channel. It's got the fast turn on here. We've got our dual channels there. No, look at this. I'm surprised. The interface is different and the screen, the screen is physically bigger. I, I stand corrected. But I'm telling you, these are physically identical uh, products. Otherwise, it's got the same hard polycarb uh, protection on it. No worries. It doesn't really have any uh, protection for falling flat on its face or anything like that. But, you know, she'll be right. It's got exactly the same uh, tilting bale. It'll have the same 18650 uh, re replaceable rechargeable battery in it. But you have to uh, open the case to get to the uh, fuses. We'll have a look at that later. But I am surprised that that screen has changed. It should be the same uh, 320 by 240 resolution screen, I think. Just physically bigger. And they've changed the look and feel
Oops, did that just power off there? Uh, that was a screensaver. I think we should be able to turn that off. Uh, yeah, and the uh, zoom window display up there is physically changed. Um, they've, the time base now says uh, nanoseconds instead of like an M colon in front of it here. Yeah, they've just changed the look and feel of it. They changed the battery indicator and stuff like that. But one menu option has here changed. It now was AC uh, over here, but now it's got a cursor over here. So, so I'm wondering whether or not uh, this change was reflected back in the 702S model because uh, Zotec did say that I did have an early unit. Um, so maybe they have changed it. I don't know. If you know, leave it in the comments down below. If I can pull up some uh, photos of a newer one, a 702, running this same uh, interface and a slightly larger screen, I'll let you know. But the interface should work identically here. We're in volts time mode here. So that changes our time base like that. And that should change our vertical. Oh, I must be in uh, times 10 mode. Does that show up anywhere? I don't know if I mentioned it on this one over here, but yeah, that's wrong. There should be a times 10 indicator. Anyway, they've moved uh, the channel, or the, the vertical uh, display from up the top here. They've moved it to down the bottom, which I like better, but yeah. So yeah, we need to see it tells us uh, times 10 probe over there. We definitely need times one. So yeah, that indicator needs to be off that menu. That's not good enough. It needs to be on the screen. So you know what's what. So it's 20 millivolts uh, per division minimum. It's exactly the same and the relay should switch from 200 to 500 clunk yep physical relay switch over but there is a glitch in the matrix there as we range change but for this class of scope <laughs> yeah they're not going to bother about that anyway let's press the mo button and go into the multimeter over here and it's exactly the same so they haven't fixed what i complained about before was the absolute useless bar graph over here now, this one is physically different, so there could be a different multimeter chipset in here, perhaps. This one went to millivolts by default. This one, you have to do a different millivolt over here. There you go, but that's nicer. Look at the resolution now. Oh, one microvolt resolution, whereas this one only had 100 microvolts resolution. So that's really nice. That's got a 20, that must be a 25 millivolt full scale mode. And here it is, it's building up, yep, it went from 25 to 20 and it switched over to the 500, it's building up. So that's now, that shows that it's got a high impedance, higher than the regular 10 mega ohm input. And if I put my hands over that, we should be able to cause that to, come on, I'll rub my feet, rub my feet on the carpet. No, it's not building up that quick, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, high impedance input, but that's really nice, one microvolt, wow. Auto range test. There you go, that's pretty quick. Um, same 10 milliohm resolution. You'll see the older one is basically the same there. Continuity test. Yep, really fast. Latches, very nice. It's loud enough. One thing they haven't fixed is the useless bar graph up here. It doesn't scale properly. Like, if you change ranges, it just goes like 25. It's exactly the same. They had the same problem over here. It just went to fixed to 100. It's useless just get rid of the bar graph entirely it's not like it's faster updating or anything and give me bigger digits like i asked for that last time uh, it's like leave it in the comments do you agree what's the point of having a bar graph if it's not far a faster and b and like this is not scaled properly I, I don't get it what a waste this gigantic gorgeous screen on it which by the way has you know a pretty excellent viewing angle on it like just check out the uselessness of this bar graph look like it's not updating any quicker and it's just no, no, it's darting all around the place. Doesn't even have an option to like actually do like a bar. It's more like a dot um, version. No, it's like useless I, gimmick. Now, another gripe was that it didn't remember the range or the mode that you were in when it turned it off. So let's actually try that. Oh, here we go. It's shutting down, shutting down, starting up and um, yeah, nah. Well, it does, however, at the very least, uh, remember the mode that you're in, in terms of oscilloscope multimeter. So if we turn that off, it shuts down. And if we turn it and back on, and it goes back into uh, the multimeter mode. So that's okay. And it actually remembers uh, your last oscilloscope settings. Uh, in this particular case, single channel only, which was the second channel, and 400 millivolts per division, and the position as well. So And your time base, it remembers all that. So that's handy. 
And just like the other one, the uh, hold here is just a manual hold like that. It doesn't have like any peak hold uh, capability or, you know, a one touch type thing. Now, I was just upgrading the firmware on this. It was pretty easy. Download it from the website and uh, plug it into the uh, USB, drag and drop the file. And now it's doing it. And it's almost at the end here. So let's have a look. I was in version 30. Upgrade failed. Wah, 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 wah. Why? I don't know. I just remembered uh, this might be due to mine being like an older version. Um, and it's not the current version. But I can't actually power this thing off now. It's, I hope I haven't bricked it. Damn. Yep, I have bricked it. Other people have successfully updated their 702S. I think, yeah, they just sent me a very early unit and... Um, did, uh, uh. Now, unfortunately, it's got exactly the same error that we saw on the 702S. This is ridiculous. We're feeding in one milliamp and we're putting it into the milliamp jack here correctly. But we've got amps selected here and it's uh, telling us that it's 115 milliamps. This is like unacceptable. I know the range is not correct, but this is an easy mistake to make. This is just ridiculous. It should not be possible. So feeding in 100 milliamps, it's like, um, I think that's a warning beeper for exceeding the 10 amp maximum, even though it's in the milliamp jack. This is just, oh, uh, no. But if we switch over to milliamps, of course, um, that wasn't there before. Um, it gave us that graphic symbol telling us which jack to uh, put it in. And of course, we measure the correct thing. Now it's got the same resolution here of one uh, microamp there. And everything's hunky-dory, but if you choose the wrong jack here, you're, you're absolutely screwed. So once again, right, I put in 10 amp jack. We're in milliamp mode, 100 milliamps. It says that we're 0 0.86 milliamps. Like, no, this should not be possible. Of course, we put it in the correct setting. Once again, it tells us which jack to actually put it in. It's very brief there. It doesn't give you time to actually uh, read it. But I guess that would be annoying every time. If, that pop, if you made it longer so that you could see that particular message actually pop up, then it's like it's not long enough to read it. But if it was too long, then it would be too annoying. And you'd need a software feature to turn that off. But I don't think there's an option to actually uh, turn that warning off. It's got to have a fail as a multimeter when it's capable of just giving you incorrect readings like that without you being aware of it. Spot accuracy test on uh, 10K is fine, and 1K is fine as well. Volts DC, good enough for Australia, it's within spec, no worries. Oh, that's that's a little bit, is that outski? It's not bang on, but you know, you don't buy this meter uh, for its accuracy. It is a 0.05% uh, percent though, plus uh, three counts, so it is actually technically within spec there. So you're not buying this 25,000 count meter here to like as an accurate, like a really super accurate lab meter or something like that. You just buying it because it has more resolution than the 10,000 uh, count that you had before. And in that particular case, let's check it out. Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. No worries. And where does it flip over? There you go. It can go up 2.53 thereabouts. And of course, there'll be some hysteresis on that. So you'll probably have to go down quite significantly before it'll, yep, before it'll go back there's nothing wrong with that oh, all meters will have a range hysteresis like that and that's a good thing so that you know when you get fluctuating signals on there it's not constantly uh like range changing there's my 10 nanofarad reference cap that's doing all right and we've got the same problem as last time of like getting in there and like getting finger grip on that you can just do it but if you try and like put in a uh, t-piece for example um yeah Ugh, good luck trying to spin that around. If I want to lock that off, I've actually got to pick and get a pair of pliers in there and actually move that. That's, ah, uh, yeah, nah. Okay, let's have a play around with the built-in function gen, which is pretty much useless. So just like the uh, previous time. So let's go over here and you might think it's this output setting. Okay, so you go in here and it's got square wave. Great. And maybe we can go in there and sine wave. I haven't uh, done the auto thing yet. So let's go out like this and let's auto range like that i've only got uh no i've got both channels hooked up let's see what happens come on oh there we go <laughs> finally got it but geez it took a while and um not the same they're both on times one don't know what's doing there 
So you can even use this setting here, okay? So you go in there like that, and you can then go in here, and you can adjust the frequency, okay? But you can't go up very high for sine, so it's pretty useless. But if we go for square, you go in here, and you can't adjust any of those. It's absolutely useless. So what we can do, right, we can exit that, and we can go into more apps over here, okay? And then it's got another gen interface here, which is this one. <laughs> so why well, we have two different interfaces, things and operate in different ways. So we can turn it off and on there. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous. We can go up to 500 kilohertz, I believe. Yep, max. So 500 kilohertz, let's auto range that and see what we get. Come on, you can do it. There you go. Um, something wrong with the um, scales there. Trust me, both are times one. And all the moving and other controls works exactly uh, the same as it did last time. And once again, it's pretty noisy on there. Just ignore the fact that this has a function generator. It's useless. Anyway, we'll go down in time base there and probably can't get that to alias at this particular sig gen. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, it doesn't it doesn't like that at all. And it's got more than enough memory. I can't remember was it 50k or something. More than enough memory for uh, the purposes of such an instrument like this. And they seem to have fixed that uh, trigger level thing that we had in the 702, like trigger level offset. Seems okay now. Anyway, we can go into our measure menu here and we can go uh, volts peak to peak. So we can choose that and we can choose frequency down here. That's not too shabby. There you go, it just overlays that nicely there. One megahertz is spot on, 1.9 volts. Well, it's actually uh, two volts uh, peak to peak, but yeah, whatever. And somebody on the EV blog forum mentioned a time base setting problem on the uh, 702 at 500 nanoseconds per division. Well, on this one, it's bang on. 500 nanoseconds uh, per division and uh, one megahertz input frequency. So it's working just fine here. And good news is they have completely fixed that overrange uh, thing that we had on the uh, previous 702 model. Um, it, there's no more 1.25 microseconds per division. It's only one or two now. So your time base has changed up a bit. But check it out. We can go. I've got 10 volts peak to peak in there. And we can go uh, right down to 20 millivolts uh, per division. And there's no clip in and that weird stuff that we saw before, which, you know, was really not good. <laughs> but yeah, they fixed it. Nice. So that indicates like a different front end or different sampling system, ADC, whatever. But we'll find out inside. And as far as bandwidth goes, I don't believe the 50 megahertz. And I don't even have to measure it to know that's not the case. That's 10 megahertz. That's 20 megahertz. 30 megahertz. 40 megahertz. Oh, we're chucking the wobblies there. Oh, the wheels have fallen off the billy cart and that's 50 megahertz. So, yeah, nah. Maybe single channel. Okay, single channel on, channel 2, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz, 30 megahertz, 40 megahertz, nah, it comes the guts are again, so, yeah, nah, but, like, I don't even know why they bother going for these, you know, higher bandwidth things, 10 megahertz is plenty, 10, 20 megahertz, plenty for a little handheld uh, scope like this, no worries, but yeah, it certainly works as a scope if you uh, want to actually, you know, view some waveforms out in the field or something like that at a, in a pinch, it's like, doesn't replace a, a better, like a more featured, you know, tablet oscilloscope or something like that from one of the uh, bigger players uh, these days, like your Mixigs, um, but for, you know, something you take into the field and certainly for the price point, it works. So there's a 50 millivolt peak-to-peak uh, -peak signal, nice and clean, so, you know, it's doing a decent job at the low end. And there's the same signal at 4 megahertz. Unfortunately, the frequency detection is a bit how you're doing there. Um, trust me, yeah, yeah, there you go. You have to just zoom out a bit, otherwise uh, that little bit of jitter in there was uh, causing it a bit of problem, but... You know, it's, it's got reasonable performance. And the update rate is more than adequate for a portable scope like this. It's actually really uh, quite quick. There's a 100% uh, modulation uh, test there. And we can zoom in on that bad boy. There you go. So, you know, it's it's quite decent. Um, Like, just as a port little portable scope, just to get some uh, signals up. And it's got uh, cursor measurement as well. You can do that if you're uh, really keen. But, meh.
All right, quick look inside here. We'll compare the 702 on the left here to the new uh, 703 on the right here. Um, multimeter, front end, same HRC fuses, same arrangement. Uh, we've got exactly the same relay here, same input uh, MELF uh, high voltage resistors here. Um, single PTC is exactly the same. All the uh, clamping is exactly the same here. Uh, some resistors have changed here for the MELF, for the uh, chipset here because the multimeter chipset uh, has changed we'll try and get the number in a sec uh, but it is 25,000 count versus 10,000 count so it's different but um basically um exactly the same arrangement input protection apart from the count uh value and the accuracy in it same so it's a dm 1109en for the uh seven for the older 702 and there's a reference icl 8069 dczr and the new one, wah, 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 same voltage reference, um, but of course the accuracy comes from uh, the resistors and the calibration. But wah, 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 they've laser trimmed that off so they don't want us to know what the, that chipset is. Why? But as far as the oscilloscope goes, you can see, of course, uh, dual channel 50 megahertz versus single channel 10 megahertz are significantly larger can actually uh, cover in both there. We've got uh, three, once again, looks like they've laser etched whatever that is off. Um, and the isolation looks exactly the same. So they've got the same isolated uh, ground uh, path, but they've got a greater uh, copper fill on this uh, layer here compared to over here, because there's just more stuff. Check it out, check out all the stuff over here. There's just more, I won't go through. That looks like, a, you know, that's like SIGGEN type stuff so anyway i won't go into details but you know yeah uh, you do get significantly more there and it looks like this header sdgv um that's moved to over here yeah i'm gonna have to get the can off to uh go any further i'll get back to you okay so there's the board out there's the lcd connector that's the bottom of the board there and yeah they've completely laser etched the part number off we saw it in the previous one so um yeah i'll leave it watch the previous uh tear down it's probably just another variation of the same part i don't know why they're lasering it off though that's just that's just ridiculous it's probably the same one probably had more than enough grunt for the dual channel 50 oh maybe no no well uh, maybe it's a different uh processor solution but yeah anyway why hide it so let's get that can off Wee, wee, pop, and pop goes the weasel. Nice. And will this side just pop off? It does. Oh, look at that. We're in like Flynn. Let's get that bottom can off. Wee, there we go. Aha, there's the other solder point there. I was wondering where it was. Pop go the weasel on that one, and our can is off. And ta da. And looks like more laser <laughs> trimmed uh, part numbers unbelievable anyway um yeah it is um i think that's significantly different to the other front end so as you'd expect dual channel 50 megahertz versus single channel uh 10 megahertz and like why would you laser these off these are clearly 4051 <laughs> cmos um switches here this is just this is just ridiculous uh why 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 it's clear it's clear what they are and so yeah i don't know if the, i assume that the processor has uh changed somewhat oh wiggle 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 yeah there a bit of uh trace length matching going on there with uh, the pair next to it um so we had a separate adc before and likewise we now have another separate adc it's different to the one we had before but lays it off. So yeah, leave it in the comments down below. Once again, uh, they've got uh, length matching there for all the uh, data outputs. Looks like it's um, 8-bit uh, data. And so 8-bit uh, parallel output. That'd be a dual channel um, ADC. I don't know, some TI jobby or something like that. Once again, we're going to have probably, these are probably 4051s, right? There's just like, there's no reason to do this. <laughs> None whatsoever anyway you're not going to write home to your mum about this uh front end but hey here's our input here here's our um ac coupling here's our solid state uh, relay there just to bypass uh the coupling we've got an attenuator uh section here which has its own uh bypass 
capsule should be using my yellow pointer there. Everyone likes the yellow pointer. If you want to know, this is a spudger. It's got this. It's designed for like, you know, opening phones or whatever. Just so look for yellow spudger if you want one of these pointers. Anyway, so there's significantly more stuff. Um, yeah, but it's just like a different ADC and a different processor and a little bit more uh, to get the uh, bandwidth. But yeah. Bob's your uncle. Um, just don't expect, uh, you know, fancy pantsy. Um, I like how they've got a uh, poly switch over here for the uh, USB there. That's nice. Um, it, it's amazing that they can sell these for the price, right? We're talking like street price of like 80 US dollars, although, but that is like an on sale price. But still, it's it's amazing what you can uh, buy for the price here. And yeah, it's, it's not a spectacular multimeter. It's not a spectacular oscilloscope. It's a jack of all trades, masters of none. But, you know, it, it's going to suit some people's uh, purposes um, for the price point. Uh, what happened to my BNC? That one's straight up and down, the pins. Um, this one is not, so I can't even get it out. Oh, did I do that with my pliers when I was trying to twist the things in before? Okay, standby current consumption, 1. Uh, yeah, 1.5 microamps. Okay, let's power it on. And... 350 milliamps in oscilloscope mode, exactly the same as the 702. In multimeter mode, though, it's much less. So there you go. Um, whereas the 702 in multimeter mode, there was still 350. So they've significantly dropped that. So you will get more battery life out of this thing. In uh, for the 702, so that's handy. And that was with 80% backlight, so let's try and change the backlight here. There you go, 100%, and let's say 20%, and then 40 and 80. There you go. So, yeah, improved battery life, so that's handy. And the battery in this one is uh, 3,400 milliamp hours, so they claim, uh, which I do believe is much bigger than what came in the 702, but uh, that might depend on your uh, supplier, so yeah, don't bet on that. But yeah, we're still only talking like less than 20 hours battery life in multimeter mode. Less than half that, like sub 10 hours in oscilloscope mode, so it's not... Terrific. That's why I recommend always have like an everyday use multimeter that's not going to fail on you when you need it because of the battery and the horrible battery life. But that's the penalty you pay when you've got the uh, backlit um, color LCD like that. Oh well. So what's the verdict on this Zoe ZT703S? Well, same as the previous one. Like, it's still got issues. Like, you don't buy this as your main multimeter. I would not go out in the field as this being my only multimeter. I would, you know, have a proper secondary multimeter just from a convenience factor and from a safety and also battery life uh, point of view because this thing, uh, while it does have that 18650 uh, battery in there, it's nice that you can actually change it. So you could technically uh, carry spares and everything it's just not that convenient it's nice that you get now get the 25,000 count instead of the 10,000 count that's worth it and they have fixed uh, that uh, over range issue on the oscilloscope which is a big deal because the reason you're buying this is you're buying it for a because you want a portable scope and if it's giving you faulty readings in over range then you can't trust it of course this will still give you the faulty readings if you use the wrong amps jack over here and that's inexcusable but uh, apart from that like having dual channel uh, capability on here and the oscilloscopes more than adequate it kind of like does the job if you just want to view some waveforms out in the field so and it's like 20 bucks more for the dual channel forget about like yeah it is higher bandwidth but like forget about like 50 megahertz uh, performance or anything like that that they claim but it is really quite remarkable what you can get uh, for the money and the capabilities of it but as always with these sort of things it comes down to price point and for like what 80 bucks street price it seems to be only $20 more than the uh, single channel version I think that adds great extra value so uh, unless you're counting every penny then um yeah i'd um if you're after something like this i would go for the uh dual channel version it's nothing to write home about but 
could be useful for some people. So I can't give it like a complete thumbs up just because like you can get incorrect readings in the multimeter range and stuff like that. But this oscilloscope seems to work reasonably well. The function generator is absolutely useless. Don't even bother. But I know some people are going to find this useful and it's reasonably capable um, and quite capable actually for the price. So yeah, it's a price point thing. So even though I don't give it a complete thumbs up, I will actually um, add this to the eevblog.store, um, which is, that's the web address, eevblog.store, where you'll be able to buy this um, through AliExpress. And uh, let me know if you want me to add other stuff um, to the eevblog uh, store, and I will do so, because now I think I have the ability to do that. A beauty. Anyway, it's better in some important uh, respects than the 702. So it's quite reasonable. I'll link it in down below. Thank you very much, Zoe, for uh, sending or Zotech um, for sending this in. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.